Um, the diaspora, anybody who says it's not good, it's okay, it's good. If you go there, you have to have the mindset that you are going there to find something and bring it home. Yes. They will come through a first heat within four to five months, come in the second heat, you know, and then third heat, I ride across them between the third and the fourth heat. Because the reason being is so you can get more letters, okay, when that happens. Okay. okay, please, can you introduce yourself? Well, my name is um, Eric Nana Otu, the CEO of the Veg Farms. And, um, well, um, I reside in the United States for about 25 years. And um, we decided to at least do something that, you know, like find a business or do something that is going to help us. Okay, doing retirement because after working in the diaspora for about 25 years, we need to come home, you know, to uh, retire to something. So I made a research online, all that, and I said, you know what? Uh, I think pig, uh, pig business is a lucrative one, so I should start going into that. So that's why, you know, we, we came across this, I mean, this farm. Okay. So what year that you decided to? Start pig farm. Okay, I started this pig farm in 2022. Okay, 2022, I started this pig farm, and I was I was still in the diaspora, but and I already had the land. The land is already there. So after um, a quite full thought, because I used to grow cassava, I used to grow maize and crop farming here. I decided that no, it's it's, it's a good thing that. I start something and I do something important that is going to something that, you know, in the future, at least it will keep me busy. So that's when I started, you know, I started, I mean, and and delving into a uh, pig farming business. Okay. So it's starting. What challenge do you face? Well, and the challenges is, um, in the beginning, it wasn't, it wasn't too much of a challenge. But recently, I see that the price increase and everything in the feeding aspect has, I mean, it, it, it's just too much. It's outrageous. At, which, at the rate at which when you go to the market today, you buy uh, uh, soya beans, you buy uh, rice brown, uh, wheat brown, you know, and then concentrate. It's, it's, it's a, a, a alarming because the prices are high. So those are the only challenges. Um, but ever since we started, it was in the beginning, everything was moving fine. And also, uh, when I talk about challenges, I'll bring, my, um, I'll bring the security cameras too involved. Because when I started in the beginning, I didn't have a security camera. So you have, uh, you see, sometimes you buy some feed, and then I have workers here. So within a short time, that feed will disappear. So then I have to make sure I install security cameras where I'll be able to monitor everything myself up there in the diaspora. Okay. So the camera, once we are not here and with the camera, how do you able to mind it too? Okay. Um, I combine this with, because I have to be part of it. The thing is when you are in the diaspora and you indulge in this kind of business, you have to be involved. Okay, you have a farm manager, you have the workers, but at least you also have to be involved because, you know, um, the day-to-day -day activity of what goes on here. So when I install the camera, I have to make sure I have a data on there. So all the time I'll be watching it, you know, on my phone, myself. Anytime I get a notification, I watch it and see what's going on. Okay, so that has really helped me. And being involved, being involved in the whole process, taking records and all that, I have to make sure my family manager is taking records and myself, I'm taking records. So that way, both records have to tally. Okay, so that's been the, uh, you know, what I've, ever since we installed the cameras and all that, it's been a very helpful, you know, thing that we did. Know how to start pig farming. So today our interview will focus on the starting pick, what the, the thing that the person needs to start with. So pick, how long it take before it matured for meat? Okay, um, for um, a, a pick to come on the, uh, ready for the table, 
at least five to six months, it will be ready for the table. Okay? Yeah. That's um, yeah, a matured pig that's ready for the table, six months. Okay. So can you take out to the st steady for the pig? Okay. All right. Um, if, if, if a matured pig is six months, okay? Okay. But at my farm, I usually uh, breed my pigs within eight months, okay? okay? I let them grow more and gain more weight, okay? Because, you know, pigs they go through a cycle. They will come through a first heat within four to five months, come in the second heat, you know, and then third heat. I ride across them between the third and the fourth heat because the reason being is so you can get more litters, okay, when that happens. Okay, when a pig reach a maturity like on, at my farm, eight months, okay, a pig will come on heat. Okay, when that pig comes on heat, you will see that the valve become reddish and pinkish, okay, and will be swollen too. And sometimes you will do a, um, a back press. Sometimes you do a back press, okay, you press down uh, at the back of the pig, the 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 uh, the guilt because he, uh, the pig hasn't given birth before so the name for that is called a guilt until they give birth before it become a soul so you press the back make sure if it's in a standing heat that's why you introduce the female to the boar okay you don't take the boar to the male uh, uh, to the female you take the female to the boar when you do that you have to make sure it's a successful crossing once they cross successfully you record that day. That day, it will go through a gestation period of 114 to 115 days, which is the gestation period of a pig. So you calculate while she keep that record, you monitor it. So when the time comes and doing delivery, since they are guilt, sometimes they really need help. Okay, you have to be there to assist when they are pulling and pushing. You have to assist to uh, get the piglet out. And that way you'll be able to clean the piglets and everything and, and put the piglet by their nipples so they will be able to get the first colostrum. Okay, that's very important. So when the pig goes through that process, the, three, the third day we give them ion injection. We give them ion injection and then also for the, uh, the, the soul, which, which means the guilt that become the soul, we, uh, we give antibiotics and multivitamins. So antibiotics just to kill the, uh, the wounds and stuff like that for giving birth. And then a multivitamin to allow the, uh, the, the soul to eat. Okay. So we repeat the same ion in 21 days for the piglets. We repeat that ion 21 days for the piglet just to boost their immune system up. Okay. True that, I win my piglet at this farm, at the veg farm. I win my piglet at six weeks. So at six weeks, I'm going to wean them and then start them with a starter feed. Okay, put them on a starter feed for another six weeks. Okay, then they mature to a grower. Then we we'll get them a grower feed. You feed them with a grower and then from within five months to six months, that's the finisher because they are ready for the table. So that's the life cycle of a pig. Okay, so when you cross that, what measure that you used to know that like, the cross successful? Uh, we, we watch. We always visually watch because I told my, uh, my farm manager, I mean, even if I came, I was on, you know, I came on vacation, but I'm here. I was here when we crossed this pig. Okay, so I was here and I make sure the mounted, uh, the mountain, the boa mounted and make sure the penetration goes in successfully. That's, that's what is called successful, I mean, uh, pen, I mean, like I say, successful crossing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you are talking about record. Okay. So only crossing that you take record? No, I take record of crossing. I take record of vaccination. I take record of feed, uh, my feed that I buy because at every farm, record is a, I mean, it's a key. It's the most important. If you don't take records, then basically I would say you don't know what you're doing because you have to take record to see whether what you are doing is actually profitable or what? Are you losing or gaining? And also the record and charts for this uh, pigs. So you know that, okay, 
this pig uh, was vaccinated or dewormed at this day. So that way you won't kind of like also to prevent any kind of inbreeding too. That's, I mean, part of it too. We tag them too, just to prevent that. But Okay, so we come back to the in inbreeding. But uh -huh. right now, how many times do you deworm them? Oh, I deworm them every two months. Every two months. Every two months we deworm every, I mean, uh, every pig in this area, I mean, uh, in this pants. We deworm uh, all the pigs. And sometimes we do it ourselves. And we have a vet that comes monthly to check up on them and do everything. But since my manager has been trained to do vaccine and do worm, so we do most of it ourselves. What what of inbreeding? Okay, inbreeding is a is the mating of related animals. Animals that are related, let's say they're from the same bloodstream. That's called inbreeding. You don't allow that. Yeah. Okay. Do worm them? Do are they have some disease that affect them? Um, the only disease that I have been ever since we started, like I said, near uh, almost two years, it's it's just worms. If you see that they are not eating well or anything, then you know that uh, you need to deworm them. And sometimes we let the vet come to vet goes through monthly to make sure all the animals are okay. But the only thing is. The, the worms are the only thing because you know this pigs eat, uh, you know, they eat in the ground, so uh, in the concrete. So sometimes there could be anything. So worms is what mainly affect them. Yeah. Okay. So the the worm, the sickness is only the worm that mostly affect them. Yeah, mostly for what I've seen so far here. I know we have skin disease, we have a lot of diseases, but. For what I've experienced in my farm here is only when they are not growing and they're not eating, then it's worms. You need to deworm them. Yeah. So let's say I got the absent. What's absent that is before pig? Well, uh, before the absent, the environment to environment and the absent. The environment and absent. Okay. What I would say is uh, it depends on your personal preference. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, your pocket too because sometimes some people like the concrete some even do the wooden one wooden structure which i've seen a lot of people and some even start small with the bamboo structure and stuff like that but i prefer the old traditional way going with a concrete so that way we'll be able to do a routine washing every day so i really prefer this one and then the um, the environment too you have to make sure cleanliness is number one you always make sure your, your pens are clean, you wash them daily, and your environment are clean. Even the air, I mean, the whole environment, before anybody comes in the, in the farm, make sure it's clean, not like stuff laying anywhere, you know, because cleanliness is the key. So we don't attract any kind of a, a, a flu or any kind of thing, you know, fever or anything, because, you know, there's a lot of diseases out there. Uh, one, one would be the deadly one, which is the African a ASF, the African swine flu. We don't want that. So we have to make sure cleanliness is the key. Okay. So you're talking about cleanliness is the key. So your daily activity, can you take out to your daily activity? Okay. Uh, my daily activity is uh, my workers here, they wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning. Okay, 5 a.m. First of all, they will go through all the pens, open it, check, make sure all the animals are uh, you know in health uh, good health condition because the thing we have to know is this pigs when you go in their pen it's like you are coming to their territory so when you come there they has to be i mean like erect their ears will be erect they're looking at you that means that pig is active okay when you see a pig that is like it's not looking at you it's like going to the i mean finding a way to hide at the corner and stuff then you know there's something definitely wrong with that pig so when we do that we do that first we check all the pens we make sure all the animals are in good health and then secondly we come they come and sweep all the pens they sweep every pen here they sweep it before we give them so within these two hours we feed them 7 a.m in the morning so within these two hours they make sure they clean, they clean everywhere, there are uh, pens everywhere. Make sure there's nothing. If there's any leftover, we clean that leftover. We don't add another feed to it. We make sure we clean it. So we do all that before we feed them 7 a.m. When we feed them 7 a.m., we check up on them 12 o'clock. We'll come, we check up, matter of fact, we check up every hour 
I told him every hour they should open the pen and check out what's going on in the pen. And then at 12 o'clock, we're going to um, um, clean, sweep again, sweep the whole entire pen. Then 3 o'clock, we feed them for the second time. Okay, after we feed them for the second time, then 6 o'clock, we come here and clean back again before the next morning. So that's the way our daily routine is. Okay. So, like, the, the pen, do you have a site for their pen? Yeah. Um, the room size. The room size, basically, like, we have them, like, some are, uh, 7 by 10. 7 by 10. That's the size that we have our pen. All our pen are 7 by 10. Unless those ones for the winners, when we are freshly win, we have, like, 15 by 20. There's a big one on the other side of the, the pen. This is a breathing area, so we don't have the winners here. The winners are on the other side. We have a bigger pens there, 15 by 20 feet. I'm beginner. What capital that I can use to start? Well, like I said, I always have, I mean, I know that it's always good to start small and then grow big. Okay? It's not necessary. And most of it is in your pocket too. It's not necessary that you have to start 10, 15 animals. No. You can start with one or two. It depends on your pocket. Okay? Start with that, start small, and grow big. Because remember, this animal, they are, I mean, they are really prolific animals, okay? They give birth a lot. Sometimes you can have about 15, you know, about 13. The least we had at this farm is like eight, okay? So you can have 10, 12, 15. So you have to make sure um, you, uh, you can, you have some kind of capital aside. You use it to feed them because... Once you cross this, those ones that you have, if you have one or two, four months, they will give birth. Within three months, uh, three, month, three weeks, three days, they're going to give birth. So you have to prepare for that. So set aside some money and then, you know, use that too. And then, you, like I said, you grow big. Within the business, you, grow, you start small and grow big. And also, it depends on your pocket. Don't get me wrong. It depends on your pocket. How much you think you can, you know, you have to invest okay so what breed that you advise for me to start with okay i will advise to uh for a new beginner to start with uh uh the large white okay the large white is uh um, is is really they, they they are really prolific and they they are they stand in all weather you know they are strong yeah so i will advise somebody to start with a uh large white and they are affordable too not too expensive like i know the durox are the you know the durox are the higher prices in the market and all that but if you don't have the money and you don't as a beginner i would advise you go for the large white okay yeah so like why do they give them more or yes large white they give them more but like i said the high the highest of the highest I've had in this farm here is 15. Okay. okay. Yeah. So large white, they give birth more. So that's why they are more prolific. So I like large white. But it's always it's good when you have the uh, investment or you have any kind of capital, you can buy the Duroc too and crossbreed them. Land race is also good, but you crossbreed with a large white, you get more letters. That's good. Okay. So is this... A, a for me to buy the male and female at the same farm? Usually it's not. Unless you really trusted that farm. You trust the farm. Because like me, especially my farm here, I have a lot of boas here. Okay? A lot of boas, I bought them from different farms. Okay? So, if, if you come here and you buy, uh, you buy a pig from me, and I tell you because I keep record, I'm not going to lie to you because I know that I mean, uh, you, you are in for business too. You are doing this as a business. So, if, I mean, I will make sure that if you are buying a boa for me, I'm not giving you a boa that is, is being, let's say the mother is here, the mother, and I'm selling the, the guilt and then the, the boa at the same time from the same mom. No, that's inbreeding. That's not good. That means I'm not helping. So that's why you have to find a competent, a competent farm. You know, a farm who, I mean, they keep record. You know, and a very repeatable farm, a farm that you know that they are legit. But other than that, I would advise if you can buy all the females from one side, 
and I go to another farm maybe and find a boa from another farm. Okay, once I'm a beginner, now I'm going to start pig farm. So if I enter a farm, what and what does I need to find out the farmer before I can buy the animal from the farmer? Okay, uh, when you get there, you have to make sure you ask for the record first. Okay, check the record. Let them give you, I mean, point, if you point the animals that you want, you say, you, you're going to tell the farmer that, hey, I'm going to breed this animal. I'm not going to use it for meat. I'm breeding it. So if you are breeding it and it's going to give you a breeding stock, it should give you a chart, it should give you a record of that breed. So look, that's very important to look at the, you know, the record. You know, make sure the the vaccination and everything the record is there and ever you i mean from the bed okay all the way to a grower state to a finisher you have they have all that record and they can tell you that hey this pig is actually you know it's i mean it has all the qualities and has everything as a farmer i know because at my farm i know which ones are very you know okay if you, if you want to use it for uh like a breeding stock I will show you. You want to use it for meat? That's also there. So it's always good when you go ask for the record first before you do anything. When you see any pick, ask for the record. Go through the chat and make sure you are satisfied. Oh, okay. So what about the water? Okay. That's, that's also a, a very important thing. Before you even start this farm, make sure you can get water. Because water is... Uh, Oh, water makes about 75% of this body weight of this pigs. They like water. You know, water is number one. Okay? Yeah, so make sure you got water. If you have water and your, your vaccination and your feeding aspect, you're good to go. But you have to make sure there's water. Because if this, this animal, I mean, they, they, they don't get water for maybe one day or two days, I'm telling you they're going to lose weight drastically. Because I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, so water is essential. As, as water is essential to human being, pigs are also treated as a human being. As, as also like humans. Even though they are animals, but they drink good and quality water. Not just any water. Not just a dirty water. But make sure it's a clean and quality drinkable water. Okay, so wait. What about the, the, the feeding? The feeding, uh, we buy uh, the ingredients and we prepare our own feed. So we buy the, the corn, we buy the soya, we buy rice brown, we buy wheat brown, and we buy concentrate. Okay, so, and uh, uh, kujis uh, too, and PKC. We add PKC and a little bit of salt. So we prepare our own feed here. And at any particular stage, we have especially the, uh, the winners. When we freshly wean them, we always make sure we give them high in protein because that's going to build their muscles. Okay, yeah. So, okay, so the, the format that you said, can you explain the format for us? For Maybe PKC, to the, if I, the winning that you use for your feed. Okay, um, if it depends on uh, what you want to prepare, let's say 100 kg, um, 100 kg feed or something. So you use 100 kg feed. Okay, for... I'm using 100 kg for, uh, for the winners. Okay. okay, yeah, I would take probably 25, uh, no, about 15 kg of uh, uh, corn. And I'll take uh, uh, the soya bean, will be more, about 25 kg. And then I add a, uh, a little bit of a PKC, the concentrate about 10 kg of the uh, of the Kujis concentrate. Okay, I add that a little bit of maybe 0. 0. 0.05 grams of salt. Okay, and then um, with a little bit of uh, about maybe five 10 kg of rice brown. And then we we'll make sure we add them. If we all this, we tally all up. Make sure it's about at the hundred kg. Okay. And then we mix them together, and that's solely for the uh, for the winners. Okay. Yeah, so that's what we do normally. And then the uh, the growers too. There's a different 
I mean, format we, we use because at the Piglet, we have uh, what I have at my farm here. I make sure from zero to three months and high in protein, so it will build them up. After three, four months, you just reduce the protein level, but then a little bit of more carbohydrate just to make sure they keep their weight in shape. And then to the finishes, uh, you don't really need a lot of protein because you are ready. They are ready for them to go. Unless you are using them as a breeding stock. That's why you still maintain a high level of uh, protein and carbohydrate. Okay. So yeah. your format, you give it to me. So six months, what kilo that you get for a pig? Oh, they are at six months, I should have about 70 to 80 uh, kg in six months. Okay. Yeah, every, in six months, I should have that. And um, what we have here is a six months, the least kg we've had is 65 kg. 65. 65, okay. that's the least kg. But most of them is about 70 to 80 kg. Okay. Yeah. So your farm, can you give us the price that you have for your farm? The uh, prices for the... the oh, for the, uh, for the animals? Yeah. Okay. Um, what you can do now is, right now, we sell the kg at 30 cities per k uh, kilo. Okay. okay, that's the mature and grown one, those finishes. But as far as the winners to grow us, you can get it from, from 900 cities to 1,005 within. Okay, we don't sell them, uh, those ones by kg. We sell them, we price them as soon as we win them. So you can get some for as long as 1,005. It depends whether it's a pure large white or it's a crossbreed. So from 900 to 1,005, you can get a... The winner and then from uh let's say from six months upwards we weigh them like i said i mean the the least kg i've had is 65 kg okay so the, okay so the peasants one to the price the price of the peasants or the one you, you are across already oh the one i've crossed what i do is um uh what i do is normally i weigh them by kg too but i charge a cross uh, 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 crossing fee of 500 Ghana cities to cross them for you because somebody will buy. I know I have a, I have a couple, I mean, customers that buy, they're in the diaspora, but they have families here that do the work. Okay, he wants me to cross, I think, five for them, which we did. So he made a payment and we make sure we monitor animals. When they come on heat, we cross them. And we did that and they took all the animals away, but I only charge. Like I said, it depends because since I've been talking to the guy, I think I made it 400 for him, 400 Ghana City for the crossing fee. But I weigh the animal, okay, before I even cross. So I weigh the animal and charge the animal and charge the price by 30 city kg and then know how much I'm supposed to take. And then the crossing fee will be, I gave him like, I said, the base. The base I charge is 500 Ghana city, but because of the relationship I have with him, I gave it to him as a 400 Ghana city. So, which means in ev on on every pig that he bought, a pregnant ones are ready. And and the, the good thing is they didn't even last like a week here. They all came on heat. I think two came on heat the same day. The next day, two came on heat, and then the last day, I think the last but one day, yeah, another one came on heat. So we were able to cross all five. And they were taken out successfully. And right now, I even had one of them, you know, has given birth to 10 piglets already. Those girls, yeah. How, how long the distance that the pig can travel to? Okay. Um, it, uh, it that, let's say if I put it like the distance, because I've taken, I've taken a pig, I brought a pig from Legon Farms in Accra. But you have to do that early in the morning or in the evening when the sun sets. Because you don't have, you know, when it's too hot, you know, these pigs don't have a sweat glands. So sometimes they really, their body, they are, you know, so that's why you see pigs. Sometimes they wallow in the mud. You know, they see any water, they want to wallow because they want to extra coating just to cool their body. Because they, uh, they don't, I mean, they don't have sweat glands. So you have to do this early in the morning when the temperature is favorable or in the evening. So it can go as far as, like I said, I've gone to a car before. I've gone to uh, in Sawum before. Yeah, so uh, I don't think there's any duration like 
unless maybe you're talking about from the north. Yeah, that's too far. That one I won't do that. But if you're in central, you want something from Greater Accra or uh, Koforidia area, you can do that. Or maybe Asen Fosu area, you can do that as long as the temperature is favorable. Okay. So is it profitable? Wait, is this profitable? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's very profitable if done right. Okay. Pig farming is profitable if done right. If you follow all the uh, procedures, you follow everything you're supposed to do, taking records and all that, it is profitable. So, because, go ahead. Okay, so in the year, how much are you able to get for the year? Um, I think, um, let me see, the first year we sold close to, it's 48 pigs the first year. Okay. Because myself, I started with like five. Four females and one male. Okay. Okay, from Legon, University of Ghana. But the thing is, along the line, I saw that I was paying workers while they are only taking care of four, uh, five animals. So what I did is I bought 15 males from another farm. Those are winners. Okay. So within three, four months, they become big. And when we feed them right, quality feed, they become big, and we sold them. So with that, the first year I sold, like I said, 48 pigs. And like I said, the minimum kg I'll see here is most of them is about 75 to 80. But the la only one I've seen like 65 within six months. Okay. Yeah. So you can do that uh, math. You know, you can do the math. So even if you subtract all your expenses and all that, it is profitable. Yeah. Okay. If, if we can mention that man, then I'll be happy on that by ah. if anything. Master, do the calculation. <laughs> comment on below so I, you know the amount of the is you see, I'm, I'm in place 48. Uh, 48 pigs. So, do the calculation for us for the 48 pigs. Uh, okay, so within the start pick, what do you able to uh, gain from inside? Oh, the benefit that you, oh, the benefit. Oh, I was uh, the benefit one. I've, I've used it to do some extension, you know, expand the farm because I have to expand it. Because, you know, this, they are prolific. Whilst they're giving birth, you need to expand. So I've done some expansions, you know, at the farm. It's all because of the proceeds, the proceeds from this pigs. Okay, I've done ex expansions and also, I mean, we are in the process of doing the other pen, the third pen over there, we are doing some extensions too. So, like I said, um, I'm not going to lie. I'm here. I'm taking records because everything is on the paper. I take records. Everything I buy is on the paper. So, like I said, when you do your subtraction, at least your 35 to 40%, you will get it as a profit. So, it is profitable. Okay. So, once you, you stay abroad and you are managing a farm and somebody too is outside Ghana and you want to start pick, what advice that you give the person? Uh, the advice I'll give the person staying abroad. The advice I'll give somebody in the diaspora is you have to have a trusted person. Okay. But also, not all the trusted people we think they are, uh, we trust are really, you know, doing what they're supposed to do. So I will advise when you start, you have to be somebody who travel frequently. Okay, maybe once a year or whatever, travel down and see it yourself. Okay, make sure you also involve yourself in the activity, daily activities at the farm. Take records up there. They should report, they should report, they should report everything to you. Whatever is going on, they should let you know. They should report everything at the farm, day to day activity at the farm. It should be reported to you. So record that. And then they record this and make sure they all tally. If you tally and you have somebody, you can't trust somebody 100%. That one, I'll be honest with you. You can never trust anybody 100%. But at least about, let's say about 80 to 90% and give them the benefit of the doubt. The 10% will be the benefit of the doubt. You know, I mean, but when you work with a person and you treat the person good, you have to treat the workers good. When you treat them good, I'm telling you, they will do a good job for you. And I also regular phone call. I forgot this. Regular phone call is very important because you have to constantly call to see what's going on. Okay? 
So like I'm here and they want to buy a pig. What did they do? They weigh the pig out here. I'm looking at them at the camera. I have security cameras here. But they wait and take a video of the weight and everything and calculate. So I know. So I'll record that. So there's no way you're going to come back. And the same pig, I'll make sure. As soon as the pig, I have cameras in the pen. And then when you go out too, I have cameras. And I have audio cameras outside. So whatever you say outside, I can, you know, I will listen to whatever you say outside. It's all, you know, I, I mean, comes on my phone. So um, I will advise the, the diasporans and anybody living abroad, anywhere, it can be done. Yes, it can be done. But if you don't have the right person, then I'll suggest you don't put yourself in that. But if you have somebody that you trusted, at least you give benefit of the doubt, I mean, go ahead and start. And then make sure you will come down regularly. You'll be able to come down regularly because since you have a business, you have to be able to come down regularly to monitor this business, to see day-to-day -day activity. And the main reason why I also opened this farm is um, shortly, maybe I'll be going to retirement. So at least I was thinking about that, you know, to wait. Maybe wait till retirement before I do it. But later on, I said, no, I think it would be a good, good idea. I, I start the farm. So I will let the, uh, the farm establish before I will come down myself. But even that, I come here all the time. Even this year, I've been in Ghana twice. So sometimes that's how it is. You know, when we do that, you see that everything will be going on well. Okay, so before you, I will make you advise the youth. Mm -hmm. Can you take us through the, your life in abroad for us? All right. Um, life in the uh, United States. <laughs> I know. <clears throat> I've been in the States since uh, 2000. The year 2000. I've been there. You know, you know how it is like every other place. You know, I was in Ghana. As far as I was working at, uh, as, at a company at Tema, Unico Alumetas. I was working there. I also been a teacher before. But then I went, when I went to the state, I have to do some courses, you know, just to get me where I am. So I have to go to a community college to uh, do a courses related to water. So I get into the water business and I'm now working with a water company. And I've been with a water company for 19 years. Okay. I've been with a water company for 19 years up there. So doing it, looking at how, how much we're struggling and how much, you know, we are toiling just all for making the ends meet, you know, going out to a, a place in the diaspora where you don't know anybody, where you have to start a life all over and all that. I mean, I, I, I did what I have to do, you know, but now, like I say, I'm, 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 I'm a utility Water utility crew chief. Okay, yeah, I'm a crew chief because I've been in the company very soon. Maybe, you know, I'll be retired very soon. But uh, it's, it's a good experience. Um, the diaspora, anybody who says it's not good, it's okay, it's good. If you go there, you have to have the mindset that you are going there to find something and bring it home. Yeah, so that's basically my life up in the States. Okay. Okay. So you are advice for the youth. Advice for you to want to start big. Okay. Um, I will advise the youth that um, there's not just in the diaspora you have you can make it. There's money here in Ghana. There's money here in our motherland. Okay. And uh, agriculture, we say, is the backbone of most countries. Okay. So if done right, if done right, agriculture, like Africa, we shouldn't be poor. Not at all. But, you know, every country have their ups and downs. You know, um, government issues. We're dealing with people. So, you know, it's not, it's not bad. I'm telling you. If you are a youth, start something small. You can start from your mom's kitchen. Start from there. Start somewhere. If, if you want to go into a crop farming, animal farming, or anything, start small. Okay? And you go big. It can be done. Okay, and everything, uh, don't, don't always think that going in the diaspora. Yes, if you get a chance to go in the diaspora, it's good. It's also good because you, are, you have a motive and a mindset that you are going to find something and bring it home. But if, if you are here and you find, yourself, you find yourself something doing small, I said, 
It's very important. Do it. It's very good. Okay, take it serious. Be diligent in everything you do, and you shall excel. Before you end this interview, I prefer to advise somebody like me. I want to start pig farming, and I don't have any capital. What advice that you, you give it to me? Um, I know you want to uh, start a pig farming, and you, you say you don't have any capital. At least you should have something small to start with. If you don't have any capital, it means you have to find something doing. You have to find something. A job, any job. Find it doing and you get some capital. If you find a small capital, maybe start with buying one piglet or winner. Buy a piglet. Like I said, that's why I say you can start from your mom's kitchen. Maybe you have somewhere at your, at your house or your wherever you live, you have somewhere where you can get a wooden structure, a small one. Start feeding this animal. Okay, they are prolific. And if they grow within six months, seven months, or eight months, within six months, you'll be able to cross. At that time, this pig has come on heat second time. You'll be on his third heat. But me, I like to, you know, like I said, I told in the, uh, uh, in the interview, I want mine at eight months. But you can start, like I said, start small. I know you don't have it. Start small, and you grow big. Don't be in there. Don't say, oh, this money is too small. I don't think I'll be able to uh, start this thing, or I don't think I'll be able to manage this thing. You have to have time. Even if you go to work, you have a work. You can go to work and then come back. Because some people have, where they have a small session, they will clean, they will feed them in the morning, they will do everything. They will go and do their daily choice, do something and come, maybe sleep in the afternoon, come home real quick, take care of them and go back again and finish what they're doing. So it can be done. I just want to advise anybody, it can be done, okay? If if I have done it, if somebody else have done it, if, 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 if anybody has done it, you can also do it. Also, um, if you don't have money and you really interested, you want to learn this pig farming, okay? You want to learn, you can go under training, okay? You can work with somebody. Like I have a guy here who is working with me. He probably he told me he wants to work three years. And then when he goes to the north, he will go and open his own farm. You go and do it, which is good then. You know, you work with that person. He pay you. You gather some money. And then later on, you can travel to go do how, what you want to do. So it's always good to, if you don't have the money, work. Let's, let's just try to do something. Because if you don't work, you're not going to get it. You have to do something. Put in effort. Oh, I like I like the last one. So I can once you are under somebody, the person is paying you, but you two are learning yes. a lot on the face. So when you yeah. start on counter any challenge there, because you're able to learn everything on pay. So yeah. thank you very much, please. If you can share your telephone number and your social handle for us, and I'll be happy. Okay. Um. Again, this is the Verge Farms, and uh, if you go to YouTube, look at the Verge Farms. We are there. Facebook and Instagram. And our phone number is 0541-331553. The farm manager is Jonathan Mensa at uh, 0541-331553. Okay. Uh, uh, you guys, like I said, feel free to uh, leave any comment. Go to our, our website, our YouTube channel handle. Leave any, look at our videos. You can also go through that. And also, Please subscribe to the World Farming Talks. Subscribe to their channel too. He's been doing an amazing job. And he's been going around doing an amazing job, bringing the farming to reality. Okay. All right. Please, so if you watch this part of the end of this video, I, I want to like the video, share, and subscribe. Subscribe to any group that you are in for farming, any farming group or any Facebook page that you are in. Share the video so that it can reach a lot of people so that they can able to start their own pig farm or any farm that they want to start thank you very much see you bye